public outcry in Miami Beach. Since I got involved, I've personally witnessed water pouring into the classrooms. Spurred a CBS News Miami investigation where Jim DeFeedy discovered two Miami Beach public schools needing critical repairs last February. Exposed rebar, cracked walls, and leaks at North Beach Elementary. Floor tiles left in ruin at Feinberg Fisher Elementary. And we can always do better with the timeliness, right? Miami-Dade School Superintendent Dr. Jose Dotres told Defiti about shortfalls in fixing schools last year. Our CBS investigation found budget cuts and staff reductions contribute to addressing repairs in the district's nearly 400 public schools. Probably like 35% short on staff. That, that I could ideally have. Months later, we went back to the district, meeting with Chief Facilities Officer Raul Perez at a school construction site in downtown Miami. He explains how fixes get done if Miami-Dade staff needs help on its thousands of open work orders. We have a team of, of private um, sector partners that we work with when these kind of matters arise. Last summer, the district addressed the critical repairs. Completed work we observed firsthand, as North Miami Beach's principal happily points out there are no more leaky ceilings. Same situation at Feinberg Fisher, where we see the transformation in the now refurbished classroom. Uh, reinstalled the new floors, uh, did all the, uh, all the remedial work that needed to be done. Addressing all building needs district-wide is a moving target. I want to be clear that addressing facilities needs, it's not something that you get done because as soon as you finish a building, you know, the one that you did 10 years ago needs uh, support again, right? I met board member and facilities committee chair Luisa Santos outside a school in her district, West Homestead K-8 Center. It's one of the latest to spend funds from the voted upon $1.2 billion general obligation bond. The bond, passed in 2012, pays for school updates and renovations. I want to hear everybody. First graders in Mrs. Castillo's class can now learn in a whole new way thanks to the latest tech advances and audio classroom enhancements in one of the new buildings at the school, funded by the bond. It really just fosters that pride of education. CBS News Miami dug into the data and found the district did so equitably, budgeting and spending more dollars fixing schools with a higher percentage of low-income kids, a plan produced by priority and need. What needs to be addressed first, and that's the school that needs that, that we go to, and then we move on from there to every other school depending on that on that priority. Many schools like West Homestead K-8 Center use the project design plans used at other schools to move bond projects along faster. Perez says it saved nearly a year per project, and depending on the project, anywhere from 500000 to $2 million in design costs. Other district schools require out-of-the-box plans, like Southside Prep, in Brickell. An urban facility. Normally our schools, one story, two stories at the most. Yeah. Here we're in a tight, you know, uh, urban area. Perez and I tore the construction underway to build a school that's seven stories tall. The first flight of stairs guides us to a two-level lunch space for students with elevated stairs to sit and relax. On the fourth floor, we see our first set of traditional classrooms with a shared space in the middle for students to study. A collaborative space. Yeah, this so is just like an empty hallway. It's going to be. No, there'll be so there'll be there'll be purposeful. furniture in here, and uh, you know, colorful furniture. The the floor is going to be very active. The new building will be ready by the next school year, and it features an outdoor top floor built for recreation. The only thing I would be worried about if I was up here, and this is only because sometimes I get a little terrified of heights is if you ever came up to this point and you went like, oh, hey, look what's behind me. I'm just kidding. It's not that bad, but it's a wonderful view, though. Look at the skyline behind me. And the creativity extends beyond the classroom. The building is mixed use, providing housing for district employees, built by a developer not affiliated with the district. And this is one of those missions where we can start to tackle and help our district employees find some affordable housing. But when the remaining $273 million in bond funds run out, the board will need to create a budget and a plan to continue to address and fix the needs that suddenly arise, like the ones CBS News Miami uncovered in Miami Beach last year. So we've got a clear demonstrated need of $2.5 billion in deficiencies uh, for students that are attending those schools today. So we, we work all angles, right? We have to get creative. Now it's time to grade Miami-Dade's bond fund spending and execution.
District leaders acknowledged shortcomings in addressing repairs with less than ideal staffing. We saw the damage firsthand, but after my months long investigation examining how much they've accomplished with the billion dollars in bond funds repairing, updating, renovating or adding to the nearly 400 schools the district's responsible for, I give Miami-Dade a passing grade.